مرحبا واهلا وسهلا فيكم هوب يو ار ويل اند هاف ا وندرفول داي ويلكم تو ا بارت 4 اوف ليرنينج اكتيف بارتيسيبل ان لفانتان اربيك ذس از اور بارت 4 اند ان ذس سيشن ويل بي توكينج اباوت ذا اكتيف بارتيسيبل فروم فورم 3 تو 10 از وي نو اربيك فيربس اب تو 10 فورمز اند ذا فورم از مفعل مفعل او مفعل ديبندينج اجين ذس تشينجز بيتوين فيربس وات وي نيد تو انديرستاند از وين وي فورم ذا اكتيف بارتيسيبل فروم اني فيرب فروم فورم 3 تو 10 فيرست يو نيد تو اد ذا لتر ام و ذا كسرة او اي اكسنت تو ذا بيجينينغ اوف ذا فيرب Second, the second letter, you have to make a consonant. Third, on the third letter, you have to add the E accent underneath it. Here we've got a number of verbs from different forms. Abal is to meet. Abal. Iltaha, to join. Abal. Iltaha. Tbadal. Tbadal. Tkellam. Tkellam. Arsal. أرسل حط حط سافر سافر Then forming the active participle from all these verbs because here we've got a variety of forms here and when we change the active participle or when we form the active participle they all go under the same category which is adding the letter M we would be adding the E accent on the letter before the last if uh, not all of them would be on the third letter just most importantly the letter before the last again you'll add a letter M with an E accent or kasra make the second letter paused or add skun on top of it and the letter before the last add the E accent or kasra underneath it so abal becomes ma'abil abal ma'abil iltaha miltaha miltaha tbadal mitbadil tkallam mitkallim arsal mirsil hat hatit safar msafir he you ma ask a question the verb is hat and why do you hear we've got two letter ta here well because this is a doubled verb and in arabic whenever you see shadda on top of a letter that means you've got two letters of the same written but in arabic what we tend to do is we tend to write the letter once and write shadda on the top of it to remind us that we've got two letters of the same and when forming the active participle i'm afraid it becomes a little bit easier to undouble it so it becomes hatit hatit and then safar becomes msafir the active participle as used always it either refers to the action or to the doer which is the equivalent of the er in english like plumber writer and so on so the active participle refers to a motion of action which obviously refers to the action or the person who does the action so this is something really important for you to understand and i hope uh, that is clear for you however always feel free to leave your questions uh, in the comment section below and i'll definitely get back to you next on our agenda is how do we change the masculine active participle we've just looked at it into the feminine and then into the plural form So we've got our pattern there and we've got abal iltaha tbadal tkallam arsal hat and safar these are our verbs and when we form the active participle from it we had maabil miltaha mitbadil mitkallam mirsil hatit msafir for you to change the masculine singular form as you see here in this column to the feminine All you need to do is just to add the feminine case to the end of it. So mabil becomes mable. Miltah becomes miltaha. Mitbadil mitbadle. Mitkallam mitkalme. Mirsil mirsle. Hatit hatta. There is the rule in Arabic which says if you've got two letters of the same and when you try to add a suffix 
after it, these two letters, they double back again. Hence, in the feminine form here, you see we've doubled the letter ta back again, and we wrote our shadda on the top of it. Just to remind us, we've got two letter ta of the same there. So that becomes hatta. Hatta, that is the grammar, and that's why we've doubled back the letter ta again. Musafir becomes musafira. And then changing the singular masculine form into the plural, all we need to do again is to add een to the end of it. So m'abil, m'ablin, m'altaha, m'altahin, mitbadil, mitbadlin, mitkallim, mitkalmin, mirsil, mirslin, hatit, hatin, msafir, msafrin. And in terms of the meaning for all of these, uh, regardless of the uh, plural or the gender, the meaning stays the same. Just what that tells us that this column would be used with I masculine, you masculine and he. And this the plural column on the left hand side, which you see here, would be used with we, they and you group of people. And then finally, the middle column would be used with I feminine, you feminine and she. And the meaning would stay the same. So ma'abil, ma'abli, ma'ablin would be meeting up with. Miltaha, miltaha, and miltahin for the plural would be joining. In the same case for the rest, so hatat, hatta, and hatin, which means putting. So the translation of the meaning stays the same. But here with the active participle, for every three subject pronouns, we've got a separate conjugation. So that's why whenever you form, with a certain subject pronoun, you have to choose the correct conjugation or the correct form. So it doesn't really matter, the meaning stays the same, it's just you need to pick the correct form. Now let's have a look at a couple of examples. Ana abalet rfi'i iddam al matam. Ana abalet rfi'i iddam al matam. Ana abalet, I met rfi'i, my friend, iddam in front of al matam, the restaurant. هن متقابلين قدام المطعم وراحوا على الحفلة هن متقابلين قدام المطعم وراحوا على الحفلة So here we've got the active participle used for, for the plural form and the plural form here it's هن So they met and now me talking about them هن متقابلين They met They met in front of the restaurant and they went to the party هن متقابلين Whereas here in the first example I used the verb our third example, هي متكلمة بالموضوع. هي متكلمة بالموضوع. She talked about the matter or about the subject. So here متكلمة, that's the active participle for she third person. And then answering the question, which is, can I just use a verb instead of using the active participle? I'm not there yet. You certainly can. There's no issue at all. Just use the right tense. Whether you're talking about past activity or present or present continuous or the future, you could certainly stick and use the tenses, the proper tenses, the proper verb conjugation instead of the active participle. But I'd like to highlight that the active participle is widely used in dialect. And why? Early in the slide, I showed you that we've got only three conjugations. One conjugation would be used for three subject pronouns, and that's why they are very popular and very common in Arabic and in all dialects. So it's not just uh, Levantine Arabic, it's in all dialects. Another example. هو حاطت المفاتيح فوق الباب. هو حاطت, he put, المفاتيح, the keys, فوق, فوق, above, الباب, the door. So he put the keys above the door. And حاطت, that's the active participle. You can certainly use a verb if you want to. هي حاطة الورود بالمزهرية الجديدة. هي حاطة الورود بالمزهرية الجديدة. هي حاطة she put الورود the flowers بالمزهرية in the vase الجديدة the new in the new vase. هي أول مرة إلي مسافرة لمصر. هي أول مرة إلي مسافرة لمصر. هي أول مرة. هي this أول first مرة is once. هي أول مرة this is the first time. إلي for me مسافرة traveling لمصر to Egypt. So here مسافرة that's the active participle from the verb سافر. 
And just to highlight that Musafra could be traveler as well, like in, in this day and age, uh, we call them uh, vloggers or bloggers, uh, I think vloggers. So Musafra, Musafra could refer to the person, the traveler and traveling. And that's the nice thing about the dialect. Another example, هي ملتحة بكلية الهندسة هي ملتحة بكلية الهندسة هي ملتحة, she joined بكلية the faculty or college الهندسة engineering Again, ملتحة, that's the active participle with she third person هن مرسلين كل الدعوات للضيوف قبل بشهر هن مرسلين كل الدعوات للضيوف قبل بشهر مرسلين here that's the active participle for the group of people كل all الدعوات the invitations للضيوف to the guests قبل بشهر a month in advance which means before a month our final example صار لون متبادلين العقود من شهر نيسان صار لون they have been متبادلين exchanging or exchanged العقود the contracts العقود, the contracts من شهر نيسان from the month of April so here متبادلين that's the active participle with a group of people صارلون they have been and with this we have completed all the aspects of the active participle from form 1 up to form 10 I really hope you enjoyed and found it helpful and if you did don't forget to give a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and family so hopefully they as well enjoy learning from these if you do have any questions, please don't forget to leave them in the comment section below and I will definitely get back to you and answer your questions and definitely give it a try. See if you could make some examples of yours. Experiment and see whether you got it right and you understood it. But if still, then please do let me know and I'll give you some more examples, hopefully. And with that, I'll end today's session. Thank you all very much. Stay safe. Ma salamin.